right, folks. So, uh, you know, I wanted to do a slight recap of what we have discovered so far, because there is so much information <laughs> included in this case that it's really difficult to keep shit straight. So periodically, I think it'd be a good idea to sit down and recap and just, you know, sort of put together our list of what's going on. So with that in mind, let's look through things. I apologize for the shakiness of my dining room table. Uh, the, the floor in my dining room is uh, saltillo tile, which is a little on the uneven side. So, you know, my table is stable, but it also responds to like a lot of shaking. I live in, a, in an old school Adobe house, <laughs> so it can get a little, ah, what the fuck? Um, okay, so let's go through this. Teresa's car is found on November 5th at the Avery Salvage Yard. Before the day is even out, a search warrant is sworn out by Wiegert to obviously search the entire Avery property. That would have been my first instinct too. But, in, or no, it wasn't Wiegert, it was Fossbender. But in that uh, search warrant, he states that he believes that Teresa Halbach has been murdered and raped with no other evidence besides her car, which does not make sense. From the time of November 3rd until the time of Avery's arrest, that entire thing is run like a homicide investigation and never at any time was a missing persons investigation initiated. We have found out that uh, there is a little chink in the time frame, and that is, hold on a second. The chink in, in the time frame is that everybody keeps saying that Avery's was her last stop, but that's not actually known for certain. Now there's new information that I've come across, not new to a lot of people, I realize this, but new to me that calls into question whether or not Avery was her last stop or her second to last stop. As a result, that the answer to that question could call into question the entire investigation. We have discovered that the uh, alleged last stop was the Zipperer residence. And at the Zipperer residence, uh, Mr. Zipperer acted extremely erratic in the days following the murder. And just behaved really strange. Then we've got the fact that every person in the Avery family talked to police, but only three people were talked to more than once. And that is Stephen Avery, Brendan Dassey, and Scott Taddock. Why would he be the only one that they talked to more than once? Besides the two that have been convicted. We discovered that Scott Taddock at the time of the murder worked at the foundry, which, uh, yeah, <laughs> considering the state of the bones, hello. We also discovered that his timelines never sync up. Him and Bobby Dassey are each other's alibi. We also discovered that Ryan Hillegoss, his storyline is not accurate at all. There's a lot of misinformation in there. We've also discovered that Scott Blodern, uh, is a little on the suspicious side, you know, just a little like, huh, what the fuck? Um, we have discovered that Chuck and Earl Avery had a little bit of suspicious shit going on there, folks. We've also discovered that Barb Janda married Scott Taddock before even Stephen Avery's trial, which is extremely suspicious. She is also the only person out of the Jan out of the Dassey family, out of the Stephen Avery and, and Brendan Dassey families, who was not called to testify on the stand. We have discovered that due to the fact that the blood vial was compromised, any and all blood evidence can be considered compromised and therefore inadmissible at court. We have discovered that no fingerprinting was done on the hood latch, even though the DNA was found there. And we have discovered that the key, the discovery of the key is extremely suspicious and we have supporting documents to prove this. 
We've discovered that her DNA was not found on the leg irons anywhere. And the only time that the leg irons, well, the first time that the leg irons are mentioned anywhere in any of the documentation is when Wiegert and Fossbender feed it to Brendan Dassey during one of his interviews. We discovered that there are two or more D DNA genetic profiles on those leg irons and Teresa Halbach is completely excluded from those leg irons, which means that it is not possible that she was ever put in those leg irons ever. <laughs> We have discovered that Bobby Dassey killed a deer uh, or didn't kill a deer, but brought home a deer the night of the murder. We have discovered that there are only two places on the Avery property where Teresa Hallbach's DNA was found besides her car. And that is the bullet fragment in the garage and uh, one set of charred remains in one of the three locations that was discovered to have charred remains. And those two charred remains are suspicious and therefore are called into question and therefore are, should have been considered inadmissible at court. We have discovered that the DNA technician did not follow protocol in the DNA profiling. And we have discovered that Stephen Avery's, uh, basically there's no fingerprints of his at all. So if there's no fingerprints, how can there be fucking blood? So with all of that in mind, we now have three suspects, three hard and fast suspects, folks. This is how a criminal investigation is supposed to go. You look at the evidence, you compile your suspect list, and then you start going through and weeding them out. It's called process of elimination. If you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> because how the fuck are you living? Because that's how you make choices. So we have three hard and fast suspects. We've got George Zipper, Scott Taddock, and Ryan Hillegoss. What can we find out about these three men that can either confirm or deny? Pardon me, my two-year-old wants another graham cracker. Hold on. So now that we've compiled our suspect list, how do we go about narrowing it down further. Well, that's very simple, folks. We start taking a very hardcore look at the evidence. We start going through the evidence that we've already gone through, and we go through every bit of evidence as it becomes available online. And based off of that evidence, we start looking at each of these three suspects, whether they had motive, whether they had opportunity, and whether they had means and narrow that down. Each one of these three men had opportunity and means. All we got to do is find the motive. Ryan is the one with the most motive at the moment because he's our ex-boyfriend. But that doesn't exactly a murderer make, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> but now that we've narrowed down the suspect list, to three. Now we can narrow it down further. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start taking an even harder look at the evidence. I'm going to do uh, as much digging as my mine and my uh, video partner, as much as our skills will allow us. Hi, John. <laughs> and we are going to narrow down this suspect list even more. As we discover more evidence, we will be putting up more videos. And uh, yeah, by the way, guys, uh, I've got a booster campaign going at the moment. Uh, get a t-shirt. <laughs> because what this will do is this will allow me to buy the equipment that I need in order to give you better quality videos. I know that my camera sucks. I'm sorry. I've got a shitty computer right now. Um but also, there are some experiments that I would like to do that involve pigs, and pigs are extremely expensive, and I'll explain why in a future video. So yeah, I'll put the link for the booster campaign down below, and thank you all very much for watching. Thank you all for your support and your encouragement, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.